Okay, today we're going to be continuing our what you need to know for physics, um, what calculus you need to know for physics, with integrals. Now, when we talk about integrals, you should, intuitively, it's the area, on the signed area under a curve, below the x, a, x axis is negative. So that just means you're going to take this area and subtract this area from it and then add this tiny area since all of that is part of this interval that we're taking the integral of. So it's just this whole area, the blue bits minus this um, minus this yellow bit. And you can also think of an integral as a backwards derivative and we'll get more into what that means in just a bit. Now an integral, uh, there are two types of integrals. You have a definite integral, which is, has upper and lower limits as given by this a and this b, and it is the area under the curve f of x um, in the interval of a to b, and that's just all of the number or all of the function values, including a and b itself. Now, the indefinite integral has no bounds given and is given by that. And we'll get to more on what that means in just a bit. Now, you have two fundamental theorems of calculus that are all about integrals and how they relate to derivatives. The first is what we call the antiderivative. And this is capital F of x, or big F of x, for sh because we like to say that instead, is um, if you define it as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, which is just saying that um, our function is going to have an input that's the upper bound. Now, when we take that integral, when we take, um, take the derivative of our big f of x, we just end up with this function f, but in terms of x this upper bound. Now that's really important because it's, it's essentially saying that the integral, I mean the derivative of an integral in one variable, uh, we don't talk about having functions with multiple variables, is just the integrand, which is this inside bit. This um, bit surrounded by the integral symbol and the dt or dx, which is the differential. This means that indefinite integral of f of x is, with respect to dx, is just equal to big F of x plus c, where c is a constant. Because when you take the derivative of, of this, you want to end up with just f of x. And in order to do that, um, you add a constant, because um, when you take the derivative, the constant is going to go away. You don't know that it's just going to be zero. It could be any old number. Now, our second fundamental theorem of calculus is how to evaluate an integral using the antiderivative. If you let big of x or big f of x equal the antiderivative of f of x, then we have the in definite integral from a to b, except, um, or yeah, that's fine, a to b, um, or well, b to a in this case, of f of x with respect to dx is just big F of B minus big F of A. And this um, is just how to evaluate an integral. Now, that is a really important statement because that's how you're going to be taking all of your um, indefinite integrals. Or, yeah. And then from our uh, definitions um, in physics, we can take the displacement of velocity and displacement, velocity, and acceleration, which were derivatives, as now integrals, where the change in x, the change in displacement is equal to the different, the, the integral from 0 to t of v of t dt. And that's just like, well, what's going on with the area of v of t between 0 and t? And now that's just the same as looking at the derivative of x, x with respect to of t equals v of t. And the same with velocity, the change in velocity equals the definite integral from 0 to t of a of t dt. That, you can, you can also write those as 
x of t is equal to the indefinite integral of v of t dt, and v of t is equal to the integral of a of t dt. Of course, by the um, our per first part, it would technically be x of t plus c, but that c doesn't really matter when we're just doing physics. Now, we have integral rules, some of which are going to look a lot like our derivative rules. Now, we have the sum and different rule, difference rules, where you just you can just take the integral of each. Now, the constant multiple rule, you can take out a constant and then just take the integral. Now, the reverse interval is saying, if you look at the area from a to b, under f of x, it's actually the negative of the area from b to a of x of x. And now that that might not sound very intuitive, but it sort of just is. And then the zero length interval, the integral from zero to is, I mean the from a to a of f of x dx is just zero, and that's really just because if you're looking at the area under a curve, but you're only looking at it at one point. It's not exactly area. There's, it's just a line. It's, there's no, no area there to look at. And now you can also add intervals. The integral from a to c of f of x dx can also be looked at as the integral of a of b, a to b of f of x dx plus b to c, the integral from b to c of f of x dx. And that's just like we're going to add up this part of the area with this part of the area, and that's going to just give us the total area. Now, integrals of certain functions, here are some of the important integrals that you should probably know. Um, all of the important ones are here. So you've got the integral of 1 is just x, and, um, and the reason why is if you look at the derivative of your function 1, or f of x equals 1, you just have a line that's one unit above the x-axis. And if you take any area, since it's just a height of 1, you're just multiplying the height of 1 by the total uh, distance, so it's just x. And um, your second one, a dx, is just, once again, a r area of a rectangle with length x and height a. And the other way you can look at it is just, it's what well, you pull out the constant and you just have integral of 1 dx, so it's ax, plus c, of course. Now, for the power rule, we have x to the n dx is going to be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Now, for all of these, you can just take the derivative with the derivatives we learned, derivative rules we learned last time, and you should get the integrand. Now, um, this is the case when this is not the case when x is equal to negative 1. And then you have your your trig functions and then a few um, trig functions multiplied together. Um, and then here you have y x to the n when n is negative 1 isn't given by x to the n plus 1 over n, n to the n plus 1. That's because 1 over x dx is given by ln of x with absolute values because you don't know if x is going to be positive or negative. Um, and we, you know that ln of x is only defined for positive numbers. And if you take the derivative of ln of x without parentheses, as you learned last time, it's just 1 over x. Then your integral of um, e to the x is just e to the x, and then, yeah. So those are your integrals that you should know, and we're going to go over an example. Given the velocity function v of t times v t, or v, or v of t equals t times the square root of t, find the displacement function from time t, or find the total displacement from time t equals 1 to t equals 4. I'll give you a second to pause the video and try it yourself. Now, for this one, we have delta x is equal to the integral from 1 to 4 of t square root t times dt, or of, with respect to t. Now, 
we don't really like square roots when we're dealing with integrals and derivatives. So we're going to put that as a fractional power because that's going to be a lot easier to deal with. So now we, that's what we do here. And then we use our fractional power rules and we have um, now the integral with respect to dt of from 1 to 4 of t to the 3 over 2. Now using the power rule, which works for any number except for negative 1, including fractions and, um, and irrational numbers, so just every number except for negative 1, um, we just have t to the 3 halves plus 1 over 3 halves plus 1 evaluated at. This is the same sign that we saw back when we were evaluating derivatives from four, 1 to 4. And that just means you're going to take t equals to 4 minus t equals 1. Now, 3 halves plus 1 is just 5 halves. So we just simplified some more and we do our subtraction. 2 fifths four, times 4 to the power of 5 halves minus 2 fifths times 1 to the power of 5 halves. And then we just simplify further and we get 12.4. Now... As I said earlier, square roots, not exactly a big fan of those in integrals and derivatives, so we just like to change them to fractions, fractional powers, because they're a lot easier to deal with. Now, for this one, um, I want you to just give it a try and use calculus to um, create the kinematic equations using acceleration being equal to constant. Now, don't be discouraged if you can't figure this out on the first try, just like any of the other problems, because this one takes a bit more critical thinking. Your hint is that acceleration should be constant, and use the definition, derivative definitions of acceleration and velocity. I'll give you a second to pause the video, and I'll go over the answer. Okay. So for this one, we're going to look at equation 1 first, which is v equals v0 plus at. Now, I'm, of course, I'm assuming that you've done some physics before. So using our first, um, our definition of acceleration, we have a equals dv by dt. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to t, which we're allowed to do. So we take the derivative or the integral from 0 to t of a by dt or with respect to dt we're just looking at what the the function is doing from 0 to t that's going to give us our velocity but we're not actually going to just write velocity delta v there because on the other side we have we're evaluating it from v naught to v and the reason why we can do that is because we're taking this derivative integral of a derivative, which is just the fundamental theorem of calculus, which means this is just going to be this v. So our what we do when we evaluate those integrals is using the constant rule, we have a t evaluated from t 0 to t equals v evaluated from v to v naught. And now those are different v's. They're not the same v, they just are using the same character. It's not exactly very smart. So we have at equals v minus v naught, and then just adding v naught to both sides, we have v equals v naught plus at. So it's not too bad, it just takes a minute to try to figure out what you want to do. And now it's the same for the second kinematic equation that we'll be looking at, which is relating x to t. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take v equals dx by dt. And then we're going to integrate both sides. Now we're doing the same bound, 0 to t on this side, and then x this time x0 to x on this side. Then using the fundamental, um, we're going to actually first plug in equation 1 for v. So we have, we're now taking the integral from v0 of v0 plus at with respect to t from our boundaries. And then on the left-hand side, we haven't done anything just yet. So we're going to notice that this, once again, is just the fundamental theorem of calculus. So our answer is just going to be x evaluated at the boundaries. And then, of course, we're going to do our evaluation there. So we have v0 t plus 1 half at squared evaluated from 0 to t and x evaluated from x0 to x. 
Now we just have v naught t plus one half a t squared equals x minus x naught. Add x naught to both sides, and we have x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared, which is the formula we were looking for. And that's basically the most you need to know for integrals, for calculate, or for um, physics. At the moment, we'll cover anything else in derivatives and integrals when the need comes up. And that's it for what you need to know to get started with physics with calculus. Thanks for watching.